What is up YouTube, Hype Tech Lab here, and today I'm gonna be going into some more detail on this Sigineer Power uh, 12 kilowatt continuous 36 kilowatt peak uh, pure sine wave inverter. Um, we'll go uh, through pretty much start to finish how the power goes through this unit. So it starts with these 8D batteries and it comes onto this uh, 3 8 by 3 inch aluminum bus bar. Now please note this is bare and if somebody were to drop a tool on it, yes, they could blow up the bus bar. That's uh, part of the risk, but this is a locked door, so I'm the only one that has access. And it comes down and is bol uh, bolted together with 3 8 by 16 um, uh, bolts just drilled and tapped into the bus bar. And it comes through here, and this bus bar is held up with these L brackets on the Unistrut and has uh, two isolating bushings. Um, and it comes around and the way this is set up is I pull from opposite corners of the battery bank. So in the case of the positive of the battery, it comes to this point and the negative of the battery. So this is essentially the bottom. So it's coming, to the, the current flow is this way. In the case of the negative, it comes through here and is pulled from the top and then comes over and across and down. So pretty much at this exact point, actually it would be this exact point, there is equal resistance to every single battery. And then this other rack is mirrored. Uh, so that way, this point right here in the dead center of these two buses is equal resistance to every battery on both racks. From there, it comes up with some more bus bar and goes onto these chair lugs. The single chair lugs are for my um, Outback uh, charge controllers. Those come through this 2 watt aluminum um, cable, and I'll go into that in a later video. And then I have these dual rated chair lugs where um, there's 3 watt copper wire coming off of those and going on to the um, inlet of the inverter. These chair lugs on the inverter are rated for 250 MCM, that, that's the range on them. Unfortunately, the audio did not come through on this clip, but here we have these 3 aught cables and they are put on dual rated chair lugs. Um, in this case, if you note the uh, insulation is stripped back about 2 inches, that allows for better heat dissipation. These are 3 aught cables rated for 200 amps a piece and I have them in parallel and uh, I know they're not exactly uh, the same length, but since it's uh, such a short run, it shouldn't really affect the uh, voltage drop between the two. These are just terminated on the lugs that are actually on the inverter. Um, I just bolted them on and it works great. So that comes into this inverter through the bottom, through these terminals, and it does its thing inside of here. And then it comes out through this two inch EMT that I actually uh, use the knockout tool and just punch the knockout in the side of the inverter because normally from the factory they have uh, Terminals here and if you see these wires that's for future use for the automatic generator start feature they would go on to that uh, terminal block but they just have uh, I believe you can see it Not on this one, but they just have uh, terminals that you're supposed to stick the wire in and for this case this inverter under a continuous load is putting out 50 amps at 240 volt AC that uh, the, the the minimum uh, or the the smallest wire you can use to get that 50 amp ampacity is a number six wire and that didn't fit on the terminal block so I said screw that and I'll open this up and I'll go into detail and show how I terminated it but I did not use the um, recommended method of connection because to me it seemed uh, cheap and and it was uh susceptible to damage and i didn't like it so i just ran a two inch emt and have back-to-back -back 90s going into this can and coming out of this can i have uh, i believe either inch and a quarter inch and a half looks like inch and a half um for the solar power and then that all comes across through this two inch emt down into my gutter and i'll get into the gutter on this side when i go over um, this setup in later videos. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up this inverter and show you what's inside. So here I am inside the inverter. I have the cover zip tied on because these front controls uh, need to be connected to run this. 
So the power um, coming in comes in on these terminals and there are two circuit boards and I'll show you a very detailed view of these circuit boards um, because these are not the original circuit boards. These have been replaced one time because well, plain and simple, I blew it up. But the company that manufactures this inverter has a great warranty policy and all I had to do was pay shipping and they sent me uh, the new boards that had been blown. So if you look, this board down here has many uh, MOSFETs and those MOSFETs pretty much take 48 volts uh, DC and turn it into 48 volts AC or so, not, not exactly sure what that is. And if you look, there are these very large cables uh, coming into this transformer and this transformer transforms that 48 volts DC at a very high amperage into 240 volts AC at you know about 50 amps and if you look you can see these are the uh, similar to the connectors that were on this but I just brought in through my uh, 2 inch EMT number 6 wire and terminated straight onto the circuit breakers because that's a much more secure connection um, then then going through the circuit breaker you have a connection you have a jumper to the terminal block well actually you can see the terminal blocks in there and um, you know it's just less things that can fail and in the case of this inverter it's on 100% of the time it doesn't get any rest and if it shuts off we have a problem because you know we're off the grid and the power goes out and that's not good so I had made mention that it's really bad if the power goes out well, that happened once. If you look carefully at this board, there's a few uh, <laughs> slightly damaged, pretty much all of them. Actually, let me back up. Every single one of these MOSFETs on this board went kaboom. Now what happened was I had uh, the generators running because this is an inverter charger and I'll go into that in detail in a second. And the power was coming from the generators and charging the batteries and my generators are uh, pretty much their full output is what this battery charger will take. So uh, my stepdad had fired up his microwave adding additional load to the generators, about 2000 watts extra, and he ran it for about 30 seconds and it was, you know, not too much of a problem. Well, I called him, I'm like, hey, what's up? Why is why is the generator struggling so much? What are you turning on? And he's like, oh, I just ran my microwave. I'm like, okay, well, didn't seem like that big of a deal. And this was dinner time. So I go and fire up my microwave because I had my dinner to make and I didn't feel like coming out and turning off the generators or turning down the battery charger to, um, you know, warm up my food. Well, about 10 seconds into the microwave being on, uh, I have three Honda generators and one of the generators had uh, gone into overload mode while the other two were still running. So these right here are uh, double pull or um, double throw um, relays or whatnot. And these are 40 amp rated. And what happened is when the power of the first generator kicked out, it tried transferring back to inverter mode. So the only difference between generator mode and inverter mode is it simply just runs this circuit in reverse. Going, instead of going from AC to DC, these then go um, from DC to AC. In inverter mode, it's DC to AC. So these took the full stress and needed to suddenly switch from being a battery charger to being an inverter, and they just didn't like it. So every single one of these had blown, the power had went out, and I knew running my microwave the second the power went out, since this is supposed to sustain the power, no matter what, I knew something was wrong. So I come running out here, and it smelled like death. And uh, the one thing that I do need to change on this, and I, I strongly recommend, is I have no way of disconnecting the batteries from the inverter quickly. My means of disconnecting that is very, very bad that I strongly recommend to everybody doing something like this. You don't do what I'm doing in this case. My means of disconnecting is a socket wrench and pulling those wires off. Now, if this is blowing up, I don't think many people want to come out here, potentially in the middle of the night while they're tired and not paying attention to take care of a blown up inverter. Now, 
these boards were $20 to ship from the manufacturer covered under warranty and that's Sigineer Power. I'll have their website link in the description. And if you look, these had blown. There's a jumper that goes from this connector to here. And if you look, there's the H-bridge uh, arrangement and that's what creates the actual frequency. So both of these uh, boards had gone boom. So the manufacturer had sent me new boards and, and they came in a box like this. But while in contact, I'm like, hey, if I'm paying the shipping on these, can you throw in another set? So for another $220, they threw in another set of boards. So this is the replacement board. And as you can see, it doesn't look as melted. So they had sent those out. I rebuilt the inverter. It was all covered under warranty. I just had to pay the shipping and pay for the extra set of boards. I'm happy I didn't have to buy a new uh, 15 to $1,600 inverter. So this display starts by saying welcome. Then it tells you about the input. So this is a battery charger too, so it tells you the voltage. It tells you the output voltage, frequency, and load, your battery voltage, and the inverter mode. In other words, whether it's in uh, charge mode or line mode, uh, I mean my, in invert mode or line mode. And uh, this unit automatically transfers to charge mode when power is applied. Now this inverter right here, this specific model requires 240 volts AC on the incoming side in order to run the battery charger. And because of that, I have this transformer here that steps up 120 volts to 240 volts. The output of this inverter comes through this conduit into the gutter back up into here to this 100 amp main disconnect. Now this is 100 amps because the inverter is rated for 50 amps continuous and 150 amps for 20 seconds. Now I have a 100 amp breaker installed because I don't want to be pushing the limits of this inverter. I just want to be, you know, providing disconnecting means and at a safe level. And then I have a 4080 panel uh, set up for my distribution. So here I have a five horsepower air compressor. And if you look up here, you can see the nameplate of the motor. And I'm about to turn this on. It's currently at about 50 PSI. And I'm gonna go back inside and show you the inverter running this under load. So here we go. So here the inverter is running that air compressor. The battery voltage was around 59 volts because these were in float mode and they had just finished an equalization cycle. But here you can see we're at a 33% load, which means that air compressor is pulling about, eh, about 3000 watts. And it has no real problem. I mean, it's, it's doing its thing. It's within its, its rated capacity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the camera down and I'm gonna go turn off the air compressor and turn it back on so you can see it under load, starting up that air compressor. So here we are, 3% load and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this breaker for the shop, which is the, the panel that air compressor uh, runs on. Here we go. Thirty-four percent load. All right, so here we are, and you can make fun of me for my lame screen recording, but you can see the breakdown on cost here. Um, this top one is incorrect. You gotta look at this bottom one. It was $1,349 for the inverter, $50 for the control panel, uh, $10 for a battery temperature sensor, and $241 for shipping. Now keep in mind that that was, um, shipping to a uh, location with a loading dock and as you can see in this picture this is uh, what they sent me as it went on the truck now I uh, now I had only paid 
uh, $500 of the cost and then when the unit arrived in the United States I had paid the remainder of the balance and it showed up in perfect condition with no damage whatsoever. So if you like this video and would like to see future videos uh, living off the grid on the land then please hit the subscribe button there will be plenty more to come. If you haven't already checked it out please check out my full video living off the grid with no power bill ever and that goes over the entire system this video was mainly uh, just focusing on the inverter so again thanks for watching please hit the subscribe button on screen and feel free to ask any questions in the comments below thanks bye bye